and I were a group eight from Florida International University, both race karting, and we will be covering the PD cart. My name is Armando, I have a teammate named Mosilis, and I'll leave you with Edwin. Fuel is expensive. Does that mean that we have to compromise fun? No. That's what we're here for. We're here to design an alternative to gas-powered go-karts. As you can see, we're trying to keep it safe, keep it fun, and keep it affordable. You might be wondering how we're going to do this. One word, electricity. But how? EC motor. You still want to know how? We'll tell you. Basically, we're taking your everyday cookie cutter gas powered go kart chassis, taking off the engine, taking off the transmission, all those extra things that we don't need, and we're replacing it with a DC motor. That DC motor is going to be able to accomplish many things, and, and on top of just being able to drive the car. So, we're going to be able to brake, we're going to accelerate faster and all those things just like any other car. Now you're probably wondering, is it safe? Well, and one of the things that we were looking at and one of the surveys that we noticed, people wanted a safe car. And one thing that they said that they want a traction control system. That's why our traction control system being built in, that means safety is a standard. Is it fun? Definitely going to be fun. Why? Because a DC motor ins offers instant torque, not limited to air and fuel, battery powered, a lot less noise, and upgradable from the beginning. So that means we can make it faster. Now, it sounds a little expensive, but that's not really the case. We have, when, you were, when we have an electric power, we have literally cents per kilowatt hour as opposed to dollars per gallon. We have electric motor has less maintenance and the retrofit plan is probably cost less than upgrading or replacing a gas powered go-kart engine. It's about a thousand dollars plus the, the difference in, in batteries and so forth depending on the user. We have a few breakdown of our objectives. Electric power is our main objective which we were looking at. Then we have safety which our traction control system falls under. Marketable. We need to have a cart that moves. It has to be fast. It has to have a decent range for battery use. That is the biggest concern that we had. We cannot make a go-kart that's going to be slow. People are not going to want it. Now, our constraints are basically there are things that are holding us back, but we know that we can accomplish. There's a design. The cart must use an existing go-kart chassis. Wiring components should be should be safe for, from weather and from the user. We also have charging should be compatible with an everyday wall socket. You don't want to have to supply a proprietary socket and, and charging base and all that other stuff. That just means more money to the user. And of course, it has to be 50% more than the price of a standard go-kart. That's a maximum. We don't want it to be more than that. Now, some limitations. They're based on our DC motor that we would choose. We have torque, top speed, and acceleration. Those are the things based on the controller and the motor. We have a maximum user weight of 300 pounds. So you big guys out there, I'm sorry, but we're, you know, there's not many designs out there that we feel would hold that. And the last thing is our traction control system is only effective up to 60% of loss of traction control. That means only 60% of traction would be detected at a certain point. So that's all things that even, even normal cars nowadays, that's one rule that we found was very common. And details, here's a basic breakdown of our, of our system. We have our batteries, our driver input, electric go-kart, power controller, DC motor, and output torque. Your driver input is basically your accelerator, your electric go-kart is power controller, sends the power to the DC motor, and DC motor in turn has torque that can, that can spin the wheels. Now, here's another breakdown in more in depth with our traction control system found right here. 
It's the same as on top, except we have these sensors added that basically will show us the difference between each sensor and can send back to our microcontroller. That microcontroller can then control our main controller to reduce the output of the DC motor, thus slowing down or preventing further acceleration from the cart. Our detailed specs basically break down into ground clearance, about two inches minimum. We have a 72 by 50 inch chassis, this is one of the standard go-kart chassis, six 12 volt batteries, compact design, 30 minute minimum runtime. That was one thing that we saw, our, based on our engineering requirements, that is specific, one of the specifications. We need 30 minutes. That's something that we are based with six, six batteries and the weight of the batteries taken into consideration. Overall light weight, easily moved around, top speed will basically be determined by our controller and our, our DC motor in the end. Now I will transfer on to Alcides and he's going to speak a little more about the background and intellectual property. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to give you some background information on three different projects that we found very similar to our own project. Okay, the first one was an electric go kart designed and built well by Elliot and his son on the backyard of his house. It all started by a uh, salvage uh, chassis that they bought and they had to rebuild it from the ground up. They started by changing uh, wheel bearings restoring the, the chassis, sanding, cutting, and welding new pieces of, of steel, and finally painting the chassis. Next, they install, bought and installed a 36 volt, 600 watt DC motor with three, three batteries of 33 amp, ampere hours batteries, and uh, a speed controller, and a T-bar steering handle to, uh, with a mounted Magura 5 kilogram resisted throttle unit. All this was to control this, the power being put to, to the tires. This was the simplest one of all three projects. Next, uh, we, uh, we found an electric go-kart uh, designed and developed by Shane Colton at MIT. This, this, pro this project was, where, was based on, on, the fast, on the fast and, and fun car to drive. They started with a completely custom aluminum chassis that they handmade, handmade weighing uh, less than 55 pounds. They implemented uh, uh, two DC motors which will give them an output over 5 kilowatts and a top speed of over 30 miles per hour. They also used some external Hall effect uh, sensors to be able to communicate the controller and the, sensor, the, sensors, the speed sensors and the power being output to the wheels. The third the third uh, electric go kart that we found was by smoke, smokeless power and designed by Chuck, the president of Ivani Corporation. This go, this go kart is a fully assembled and ready to, to buy cart on the market. This uh, go kart, this go kart is hand built and powder coated with a chassis of chrome molly, which makes it a little heavier but even stronger for the safety of the user. It is. It weighs over 85 kilograms. It has a DC motor with rated at 25 watt power. A charge time and use time of about 35 minutes, which makes it pretty even. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go into into electric property, where we found three patents related to our project. The first one is an electric go kart, which patent was granted to Ronald Wayne in August 2008. He's just cleaning the, the structure, the frame of the uh, of the go kart. He's not in. He's not claiming any electrical components like motors, controllers, or anything related to uh, to electrical component. He's just claiming the actual structure of the car, which is presented here. And we're not infringing in this pattern because we're using a chassis that is coming from a gas-powered uh, go kart, and we're using we're not using this exact design. Uh, the second pattern that we found related to our project was a microcontroller. There are different microcontrollers used out there. We're not going to use this one exactly, but well, uh, that's one of them that I found. This pattern was granted to Ji Long and Zhao Wan in December 8, 2011. A microcontroller is just an integrated circuit that is composed of a memory, a storage unit, a multiplexer, and a microcontroller unit. 
uh, this microcontroller, they were, they claim uh, the actual design of the microcontroller and the process of the information. This is the design of the microcontroller where the first storage unit has to be at least three times bigger than, than the secondary uh, storage units. Then the information code is sent to the multiplexer, memory, and then to the microcontroller unit. We will not infringe on this pattern because we, we are using a microcontroller in our con uh, traction control system, but it not, doesn't necessarily have to be this one. Just any other microcontroller that will give us the options to read the sensor that we're using on the, on the control system and then send a signal to the power control. Then the last pattern that we found related to our uh, project was a traction control system being used in actual vehicles out there. On this traction control system, the Ken Kiyobuchi is claiming that the vehicle must include an engine and transmission and a brake system. Our car is going to have a brake system, but it won't have an engine neither a transmission. We're just using a DC motor directly to the axle to output the, the, the power to the tires. So we're not infringing on this pattern either. Well, now I'm going to pass it over to our team leader, uh, Ramon. Thank you. So, you ask, who's going to buy this? It's an electric car. Let's see. I'll cover this for you. These are people who are most likely to buy it. As you can see, we have car enthusiasts, great source, theme parks, speed enthusiasts, automobile enthusiasts, my favorite, extreme sports enthusiasts, and just about anybody who's willing to try out car. So, we did a research, client interview, and we also covered a survey of 26 people, which you can see, 14 of them were males, 12 females. On the survey, we retrieved data that pretty much covered their age group, 30, 20 to 30, which is a pretty decent age group. Six of them out of the 26 were the only, was, this was the one part where the experience was mid to expert level on carding, which assisted us, but was not perfect for us. Next, pretty much everyone agreed upon 30 minutes to an hour ride time. That's about what industry standard is right now for just about any carding, theme park, or running gas engines. Next, you'll see that most people agreed upon a thousand to twelve hundred dollar fair market value for a new unit, and then 30 to 40 miles per hour top speed, which is pretty good speed for any cart that you would run around on the street. 14 out of 26 were uh, concerned with losing control, stability control, or traction control, excuse me. So that's where we come in. Our unit is going to have traction control, which makes it a very safe unit, and theme parks are definitely going to love us. Lastly, you can see that battery life wasn't such a big deal for most players, people. As we move on, this is where we were brainstorming and we're covering the different sections for our BPD cart. Customers were aiming for theme parks. They have the money, so we're going to aim for them to sell them this product. Next, you can see that our setup is a battery powered, high power driven, uh, excuse me, high power drivetrain for output power, our runtime. Then, on this, our technique is where we're going to have problems as a design team. We have very little understanding of doing programming. We're three electrical engineers, so we're going to have to work hard for that. We have an uphill battle on that part. Then, my favorite part for our project is the safety, where our traction control system comes into play. Next, we accomplished our uh, weighted score, went through our different spots of weighted, uh, weighted measurements, where you have research feasibility, schedule feasibility, Economic feasibility, technical feasibility, and I'll move on to the next slide where you'll see operational, cultural, legal, marketing. And after we did it, our weighted score, you can see that we came out with a 3.93, which is a very feasible for our project. Now I move on to our fishbone diagram showing that, yes, we do have a pretty bad scenario here under E2, which is economics, and is 2 where it's funding for our project. It's only three of us, cost of making this unit is pretty high, so we mess up one thing and it's going to be coming out of our pocket right away. That's our one problem that we have. 
with that being said, you also see that we also have other possible, but they're in only class two problems where we have programming for this the controller to run our traction control system. The way we're going to avoid this, if you look at our actions, is you know start learning traction control programming right away and keep our work going through the summer. We have summer break, we're going to work through it. So as I move on, this is pretty much a summary of our electric car. It's an electric go-kart. Safety, traction control, great. Theme parks will love that. Is it going to be fun? Well, we're aiming for 30 to 40 miles per hour, but I think we're going to design it to try to make 60 miles per hour. That's going to be about our top speed. And we're going to try to go from 0 to 60 in between 4 and 4 and a half seconds, which will make it really fun. Last, our market area of the zone we're going to shoot for is theme parks like we covered last time and the fact that we can make it affordable. You get a payback right away. Electricity beats gas. Go electrical engineering. That's where we're at. Thank you. few questions. Yes. Uh, you mentioned what PD stands for? Well, actually PD stands for Pinga Dulce Cardi. Better off, you can, you can stop them now. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs>